Can deadlocks grow memory? Yes, it can. Let me show you an example. So, when the total amount of memory that a program is using is growing, it's often because the objects in that program are being leaked out. However, there is another class of problem which is that the number of stacks are growing due to the number of threads that are growing due to a deadlock. Let me explain in detail with this example. Let me switch to my remote machine over here in which I have a program running over here which I wrote to illustrate the problem. The source code of this program is not really important but I'm going to put it on GitHub and put a link in the description below uh, for the source code of this program. This program is intentionally designed to create an excessive number of threads which are deadlocked. Let's try to create a lot of threads and see what happens. When I click the launch button, a certain number of threads are created. The threads automatically deadlock because the program does not allow threads to exit. If I click launch a couple of times, we can see that the amount of memory that the program is using keeps increasing. This is because the threads have stacks and when the stacks accumulate, the amount of memory starts to increase. In this example, the amount of memory has increased to, it will say private working set, that's actually correct it will increase to, it has increased to 700 megabytes. This is because stacks are actually allocated by the heap dynamically whenever a thread is created. So if you have a lot of threads, the size of the heaps is pretty large and so you will get a lot of memory. Let me just close this application and open WinDebug to debug this scenario. Now in WinDebug, if we capture a memory dump of a program that has hundreds of threads, it's going to write all the threads to disk. So I have done that and captured a couple of memory dumps so that it can be analyzed. Now I could have attached WinDebug to the running program earlier, but it takes a very long time to download the symbol. So I've done that ahead of time and saved all the memory dumps to disk so that we can analyze it. Okay, so let's open the memory dump using WinDebug. It doesn't matter what version of WinDebug you use. I'm going to just use the 32-bit version of WinDebug. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the crash dump and go to that location over here. I have captured the memory dump at certain times. So I captured a memory dump when the program was 300 megabytes. I captured another one when it was 500, 600 and 900. I'm going to open all the memory dumps and we can see the size of the heap growing and we can try to analyze what's exactly happening and how the threads are being created. So let me go ahead and do that. So let's start with the smallest dump first. I'm just going to open the dump and I'm going to just enlarge my uh, windy bug over here. Okay, move it a bit. Okay, so now the dump has opened. What I can do is, this is a little bit of a trick. If I do open dump, and I put the next dump in here. Let me just grab that here over here. I'm just, I just need the name and I open it like that. It's going to open the second dump and if I press F5, it's going to load it into memory. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the third dump. And the fourth dump. Okay. At this point, we have all four memory dumps loaded. If I put two vertical pipes over here, I think this is called the pipe symbol. If I put two pipes over here, it's going to show me all the uh, loaded systems, which are actually the different memory dumps. I can switch to memory dump zero by doing pipe zero S. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to just run heap minus S. This shows me the size of the heap. Let me run heap minus S for all the other dumps. So if I go to the first dump and I run heap minus s and I do the same with the next one and I do the same with the last one I get a, a summary of all the heaps and I can see the heap growing over time. What I'm looking for is the committed size. If I go up to the first memory dump over here I see that the committed size started at 2636 but the next memory dump it has already increased to 4092 and the one after that has increased to 5048 and 
subsequently 7416. This shows that the heap keeps growing because the number of stacks keep growing. Because this program is deadlocked, it is just increasing in memory. Now let's dump the content of the heap so that we can see what's exactly in the heap. So the handle for the heap is going to be the same for all the memory dumps. So I'm going to dump the smallest uh, memory dump because this command is going to be a pretty excessive because there's a lot of objects in this heap. I'll fast forward this video if this takes too long. But every line that it's dumping out here is a busy line, meaning that it is an allocated memory block. And we're going to take a look at some of these memory blocks to try to find out what they are. Now, if I look at the memory dump over here, I see that in the heap, there's a repeating pattern. So for example, let me scroll a bit up. I see that there is a memory block over here, 6C8, but it's also over here. I see 4C, it's also over here. I see 6EC, which is also here. What's happening is that the blocks are being allocated exactly the same. So it's kind of like a repeating pattern. It doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these memory addresses and I'm going to take a look inside to see whether I can spot anything that is unusual. So if I look at this memory block over here, I see that it has a user pointer, but it doesn't have a stack. And the reason for that is these kind of allocations, because they were not allocated onto a an existing stack, nothing gets captured by WinDebug because when WinDebug takes the memory dump, it has to ask Windows to give it the user mode stack. It does not have one at this moment, but we can still analyze the stack using a different way. So in this scenario where we know that the stack is really large and we don't have any user mode stack tracing to see, what we can do is we can run this command called threads. What this command does is that it looks at the entire memory dump. It looks at all the threads and it writes out the addresses and sizes of the stack, the starting of the stack and the ending of the stack. Let me just scroll up this table so that you can see the top of the stack. The top of the table is, it shows the thread execution block, the stack base, the stack limit and the allocation sizes. The table is a bit misaligned, but it's not really that important. What we are looking for is that because we have so many threads in this memory dump, each of these stacks is allocated onto the heap. So if there's a lot of stacks, there's going to be a really large heap. Now, because these are actually stacks of a thread, the thread will be captured by WinDebug. What I can do is I can switch to one of these threads. So I'm going to switch to thread 400, nice round number. And if I tap KB, what I'm going to get is I'm going to actually get the stack for that allocation. If I look at the stack, I can clearly see that the thread function over here is calling wait for single object. Now, generally when a thread is created, there is one function that is called that starts the thread. So I call it thread function. I have the source code over here, which we can always open by clicking on it. And we can see that inside the thread function, there is a wait for single object, which is waiting infinite. This is how I made the thread deadlock. I basically just put a lock to stop the thread function from exiting. Let's take a deeper look at the lock. What I can do is I know that wait for single object over here. The first argument is the handle to the lock. So I'm going to take the handle to the lock to try to inspect what kind of lock it is. To check what kind of lock is pretty simple. I know that the wait for single object over here the first argument is the handle to the lock. So if I check that handle, I go handle, put in that handle and put F at the back, which is to dump all the information. I see that the handle is actually a manual reset event and it is waiting. This means that if this event waits forever, all the threads will wait forever, hence the deadlock. This event is causing the deadlock for all the threads. This kind of problem is very insidious because the program is not failing, the memory is growing and the number of threads are growing. Eventually, the program is going to crash because it's going to run out of memory or run out of handles to create threads. I have actually seen this problem occur in applications before, especially in .NET. I have seen programs run for a really long time and then the memory keeps growing, but there are no objects in the heap that is causing a memory leak. What's happening is the threads are getting deadlocked 
And because they're getting deadlocked, they're holding on to memory and thus the program's memory keeps growing and the deadlock is actually the root cause of why the memory keeps growing. Have you seen this problem before? I have seen this so many times that I think it's a pretty common issue to occur where deadlocks cause memory to grow. But let me know in the description below if you have ever seen this problem in the wild before and what did you do to solve it. Gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give me a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.